So now in this video, we will we'll see how to configure IPv6 routing using OSPF protocol, OSPF v3 protocol. And as I discussed, the concept technology remains the same what we learned in our IPv4 and the concept of areas also it's similar. So to understand the basic uh, configuration of IPv6, what I'm going to do is I'm going to configure them in multiple areas. So anyway, it's a, just a two routers. You don't really need them to be in multiple areas. So I'm going to configure these routes in area zero and only this interface I'm going to configure in area 10. So we don't need multiple areas, but we just want to understand how the configuration commands goes in case if you have multiple area configurations. Now here also, as we discussed in IP, uh, in our RIP previous video, we need to enable the protocol first. So that is what we are going to do here. So to enable the protocol, we need to go to the router one. So I'll directly configure here. We need to say IPv6 router OSPF and we have to define the process ID. So now the command is same as IPv4. The only difference is we are adding IPv6 before to that. Okay. So when you press enter, you may get some message, warning message saying that uh, you can see I have OSPF v3 message saying that OSPF v3 process ID process one could not be able to pick the router ID. Please manually configure the router ID, configure the router ID manually. Now the problem here is if you remember the concept of router ID, the router ID concept is also similar what we learned in our IP version 4. So OSPF will automatically take the first thing it will take the manual router ID if you configure. So we can configure the manual router ID command. We can go to router OSPF1 and we can say router ID and we can say 1.1.1.1 some router ID we can define. But in case if you do not define the router ID, if you don't tell the router ID what should be the router ID. In that case, OSPF will automatically take the IP address of loopback interface, right? If you remember, uh, this is what we learned. The first preference will be given to manual and the next preference will be given to the loopback interface. And in case if there is no manual configuration and there is no loopback interface present on the router, it will automatically take the highest IP address of the physical interface, the LAN or the WAN interface, okay? But in IPv6, now you can ask me, what is the reason it is not taking here? Because we have some physical interface IPv6 addresses. But in IPv6, the router ID has to be in IPv4 format only. Even though we are going to use IPv6, still the router ID should be in IPv4 format. If you want, you can verify. Uh, you can in the router mode, if you just try to say router ID, and if you see, it is in IPv4 format. So router ID is just a name. So probably name means it can be any format. So even though we are using IPv6 addresses, still we use router ID in IPv4 format. So now the next thing we need to do is, so now why it is not taking the reason is, as if you remember, there is no manual router ID configuration with it. And if I verify show IP interface brief, there is no physical interface or a loopback interface in IP version 4. In case if there is no IPv4 running on your network, on your router, it could not be able to pick the router ID. That's what it is saying. So it is saying that I'm not able to select any router ID because the reason is I don't have any loopback interface. This is not present for IPv4 and there is no physical interface for IPv4 also. So even there is no manual. So now either you configure any of the IPv4 interfaces or manually tell the router ID. So in that type of scenarios, in most cases, we always prefer manual router ID, but it's really good point to understand why it is not going to take and what is the backend process. So I'm just going to use a simple address. It can be any address in IPv4 format and I'm going to say the router ID. Okay. So now if you remember the basic commands, we just configured this command where we define the protocol and then we configure the router ID in IP version 4 format. And the next part is we need to enable the protocol under the interfaces. Now what we need to do is we need to configure protocol under the interface. Means we need to go to the S1 by 0 and F0 by 0 and we need to tell uh, the we need to configure OSPF on that interfaces. Just enable the protocol. So let's start with router 1 in that I'm getting into my 
F0 by 0 interface first, the LAN interface. I'm going to say IPv6 OSPF1 and then the command will be area. So you can always use uh, iOS help to see. Now if you see F0 by 0 interface is in area 10 as per our uh, lab here. So I just need to tell the interface here. So we are going to tell enable the protocol and advertise that interface inside your area 10. Simple, that's it. And similar way we need to go to the WAN interface and I have to use the same command but this time I have to change the area because as per our lab this interface is in area 0 and this interface is in area 10. So now we need to understand that. That's it. Now if I, if I verify show IPv6 protocols you can see these are the interfaces which I'm advertising and they are in different areas. So even you can use very useful command show IPv6 OSPF interface brief. Uh, we'll be discussing this command more in detail when we come to our uh, troubleshooting section where I'll be discussing some basic troubleshooting on it. Okay, very useful command. So most of the time we'll be using this command, especially when we are troubleshooting OSPF. Okay, done. So right now uh, the state is wait because uh, the other side is, it's not configured anyway. We'll come to router 2, we'll do the configuration. So on the router 2 also we need to say IPv6 router OSPF1. Process ID, it can be any number here, not compulsory, it has to be same, uh, but recommended to use the same number so that we don't really have any confusion on the process ID numbers, which router is using which process ID. And then I'm going to say router ID as 2.2.2.2, any number it can be, but it has to be in IPv4 format because you can see the message here, unable to pick the router ID and then enable on the interfaces, IPv6 OSP of 1, area 0. And then interface S1 by 0 also in area 0. So both the interfaces are in area 0. So now you can see the neighborship messages loading to full. The, all the seven stages remain the same. And to verify, we need to say show IPv6 OSPF neighbor. Same command. We use IP OSPF neighbor. Now we have, you have to, we have to use IPv6 OSPF neighbor. The neighborship is up. And also I can see the routes. Show IPv6 route OSPF. We can see as OI OSPF inter area routes. And then you can even ping to that particular interface. You can see here, I'm able to ping. So no changes. Similar way, if you get into some advanced routing concepts, when we get into CCNP concepts, CCNP advanced routing concepts, it's almost similar. So this is something we need to understand. Once we have this basic understanding, you can automatically get into deep into that by adding some more similar commands what we learn in IP version 4. Okay. So... The next part we'll see EAGRP finally.